a billion. Over the past decade, there's been a lot of discussion about this particular number. The primary focus of this discussion is surrounding the very small amount of people that have acquired a billion currencies. The notion of a billionaire has come into question, especially in the last year when candidates like Bernie Sanders and the Labour Party in the UK have said that we probably should not have any billionaires. In a capitalist society, the idea is that you should want to be a billionaire, right? It's the ultimate goal. It's the grand prize, uh, which is getting all the things you ever wanted and to own everything, including nature and possibly also God. It's so elusive that even our television game shows can't create billionaires, just loser millionaires. And the real question is, should we want to be a billionaire? And why should we even want this goal? Asking a question like that is completely ludicrous to some people. In a fully unfettered capitalist system, wanting to be a billionaire makes sense. Capitalism is a system based on acquisition of monetary wealth in exchange for goods and services. Not only that, but it's about getting the most goods and services for the least amount of monetary wealth spent. That way, we can have a bunch of shit and a bunch of money. It's like getting your cake and eating it in front of a bunch of starving people to ensure that they really know that they can't have any cake. And it proves that even billionaires enjoy a good sale. Now, billionaires are like dragons, right? There's not a lot of them around. They're out of touch from humanity. They live in some mountainous areas, seldom seen by regular folk. They hoard a bunch of shit that we the people think we want, but probably really don't need. And eventually, most of us are going to start hunting them for sport because of the shit that they've hoarded for so long. And much like dragons, billionaires burn shit down to protect their hoarded stuff. But instead of breathing fire, they breathe out lobbyists to evade taxes and change policies. Questioning the existence of billionaires is seen as a sin in capitalism. It means that you don't want to work hard to acquire this immense level of wealth, goods, and services. But hard work isn't how these people got their wealth. It's not to say that these people you know, didn't work hard at some point in their lives, but that was well before they were billionaires. Usually these people acquired their monetary wealth with luck and ensuring those working for them didn't reap the rewards of the work that they did. But this is not the story that's sold to us. We are sold that through hard work, determination, and believing in the equality of capitalism, we can all be billionaires. This is a lie, which is evident in how the millennial generation is treated, right? Millennials are called the lazy generation, but I'd like to know what's lazy about a generation of kids that were promised the world after four years of debt. The whole generation that was promised they'd be able to earn their keep with jobs that they were passionate about, only to wind up being yelled at by every other generation while working some service or fast food job. What's exactly lazy about a whole generation that has to work two to three jobs to keep on top of bills and then still figure out how to manage to follow their passions? We're a whole generation that hasn't received a minimum wage increase in a decade, but have had to deal with the rising cost of everything to make more billions for someone who doesn't give a shit about us. But that's the allure of the billionaire. These people have so much money that they don't have to worry about bills. A billion currencies mean that they can afford the health care or food, shelter, or rare collectibles they want without any concern. There are no struggles or suffering for the billionaires. It's basically Shangri-La. They have everything and they don't have to do a goddamn thing to keep it that way. I'd say that's far lazier than my generation of constant workers. Billionaire are the closest things to real gods we have in our society. Gods that are not determined by omnipotence, but rather their unlimited wealth. Which just goes to show that the standards for godliness have been lowered. You know, you, you used to be uh, have to uh, you know be able to do alchemy or split seas or transform into a mythical creature or or just be clean in order to be a god. Now all you need is a bank account on an island no one's heard of and you know 
made money from the blood, sweat, and tears of commoners. Being that this wealth can be used to alleviate suffering, though, why haven't we really seen less of that in the world? Part of our society's infatuation and celebration of billionaires is that they can save us. If we, the serfs, bolster their ego, they'll come down from their high mountaintops, and instead of raining fire, they'll make it rain like a rich gangster in a strip club. So why haven't the billionaires pooled all their resources and paid for health care or to feed everyone on the planet? Because the basis of acquiring all that monetary wealth isn't for us or an altruistic motive. It's for the individual billionaire. Greed-driven self-centeredness cannot and will not alleviate suffering, but it will try to convince you that it is your fault for choosing suffering. It's basically if Buddha was a sociopath with uh, like diamond prayer beads. Being a billionaire is basically like winning the game of Monopoly. Sure, you conned and cheated all your friends, and now you have all the properties and hotels on every space, and somehow you also own the jail, but now you're sitting at the board counting all your money alone with possibly the weirdest erection of your life. So the question remains, should we want to be billionaires? If you want to take care of yourself and only yourself, then yes. But that fundamentally goes against the nature of being social creatures as we are, based on developing community and innovating together. That's what human beings do. Being a billionaire literally goes against the nature of being a human being. It's so much monetary wealth that it changes your genus and species. You're no longer a homo sapien, but a homo douchebagus. A billion is an astronomically large number. As Paul France, an education technologist, reminded us on Twitter, a million seconds is 11 days. A billion seconds is over 31 years. It's one million millions. It's exponentially larger than a million. And remember, capitalism is trading goods and services for monetary wealth, and acquiring that much monetary wealth does come with a cost. And the cost of being a billionaire is letting go of your moral compass and your own humanity. So who wants to be a billionaire now? I'm going to be on tour. Got a lot of tour dates coming up this year. Uh, January 3rd, I'm at the venue on the 35th in Norfolk, Virginia. January 4th, I'm at the Comedy Closet in uh, Columbia, South Carolina. January 5th, I'm at the station in Carborough, North Carolina. Uh, January 10th and 11th, I'm going to be doing a very special show. It's the Second Hand Sketch 5-Year Anniversary Show in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania at the Arcade Comedy Theater. Uh, that's the sketch group that I started five years ago, which is why it's the anniversary show. Uh, very excited about that. So if we have any Pittsburgh friends that haven't seen um, this sketch show, please come out. January 17th, I'm at Caffeine Underground in Brooklyn, New York. January 24th, I'm at La Costaneda for Lank Out Loud Comedy in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. January 25th and 26th, we just added a second show. I'll be opening for Lee Camp at Ruba Club in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. On January 29th, I'm going to be at the 730 Tavern in Boston, Massachusetts. January 31st, I'm at the Apohattian Theater in Portland, Maine. February 7th, I'm at the Marquee Theater in Middlebury, Vermont. And February 8th, I'm at the Revelry Theater in Burlington, Vermont. But like I said, I've got a ton of stand-up comedy dates. So uh, if you want to see whether I'm coming to your city or not, you can go to my website, ramennoodlescomedy.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. Check out whether I'm coming to your city. Grab your tickets. Come hang out with me live on, uh, come, come check out the live stand-up comedy show. Um, 